Welcome back. Our contact page on our website is actually really boring. Just look at it. Let's connect. You've got a form, you've got a bit of a, uh, an image down here which rotates as you scroll up and down. But other than that, it's pretty bland. And sometimes we do overlook our contact forms. It can be a point of conversion from your website to someone contacting you. Obviously, if you've got a shop or you have some other services or other call to actions on your website, you'd want them to convert as well. But we do overlook the contact page. You know, sometimes you'll have like your phone number, your email, your social media icons, a message box, something like that. And that's about it. And when you give a whole page for that, it can get a little bit boring. So we're going to basically spruce this up a bit and add some additional functionality. We're going to do that right now. So we're on the contact page now and I've got rid of everything that was there except the title. It sits in a section which is a boxed width of 1000 pixels wide. And then we have another section which is only 800 pixels wide because I want the content to be a little bit more in inner inside the section rather than all the way to the edge or anything like that. Now we're gonna have three components to this. One which is general queries. You know, if they wanna, they have a problem and they got no one else to help, they can call on us or just to discuss stuff. The second area will be collaboration, maybe for YouTube or other ventures, they can contact us there. And then there'll be a third area, which will be for subscription. Why am I splitting it out? Because sometimes people just have the subscription added into the message form. So it might be like an action after submit, it might go to MailChimp, MailerLite, whatever. By splitting it out, I'm, let, I'm reassuring the viewer that if you contact me on the first two, you are not automatically entered onto a newsletter or a mailing list. No, you can contact me knowing that it is just a contact form. However, the third area, that is a subscription. So I'm splitting it out for them. We do have a subscription area or a button elsewhere on our website. So this is not the only place where we're gonna have the subscription. So we could use like loads of methods. We could have three columns. We could have, you know, um, toggle, accordion. But what I'd rather do is use the tab functionality. So we're just gonna drop that in. Okay, so we've got tab one and tab two. Ignore the fact you can't see the text. We're gonna modify the styling in a moment. I'm gonna modify this one and I'm gonna call this one a uh, general queries. If I can spell it correctly, general queries. Now, normally when you do your tab, you would start to add in your content here. But rather than adding in any words or images or anything like that, we're going to completely delete and instead we're going to drop a template short code into here. This is the beauty about Elementor. You don't have to just work with an Elementor form. We are working with an Elementor form, but we're going to add to it and make it a little bit more versatile for all of you. So we're going to call this one general queries. I'm just going to modify the style of it. Right, what we're now going to do is add in a template that we're going to drop into here. So what we do is we go to templates. We go to add new and we're just going to create a section. It's not a page, it's not a pop-up, it's not a header, it's not a search result, it's just a section. And I'm going to call this contact one queries, okay? I do recommend you give them a clear titles because if you have too many templates, someone's website had about 45 and the names were like header, 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 header. I knew which one they used but it was like why have you got so many named the same thing? Just be a bit clear about what you're naming it for and what the purpose is. Create template. Okay, cool. So we're not going to use any of these um, pre-built um, templates that we have here. We're going to go in and create a section. I'm going to create a two column section. This uh, column is, well, section is going to be 800. Um, actually, it won't be 800. We're going to come in just a tiny bit more because there will be a little bit of padding and whatever. So I'm going to go for about 760. Uh, we're going to have no gap and the height will be the minimum height like so. OK, and we're now going to uh, just cr give this the same color background as what I had on my other website, which I believe was an F3 F3. We're then going to drop in a form. So we're not doing anything amazing, you could argue. You could go, well, this is pretty standard. There's nothing exciting. Trust me, we are going to get to that in a moment. I'm going to have a name, email, message. I'm going to make my message be about uh, six boxes wide. So there's space for them to write. Name and email, that's kind of all I need at the moment. I will, however, add in a honeypot as well. Now, I would recommend you do this four times, okay? So I'm gonna give this a label of city, but can you see it's not there? So if a robot bot somewhere in the world says, oh, there's a city field, it might put a city in. 
the form will now cluster as spam and not let it through. A normal user will not add city because they can't see it. Look, can you see city on there? It's hidden away. This is a honeypot field. And I would say you do this four times. Maybe city, country, you know, I don't know, uh, pick something else, you know, uh, pet name or um, uh, city, you know, where were you born kind of thing. Just put stuff that is quite commonly asked as a security question. But if it gets populated, it will fail. Well, it satisfied a spam test and it won't come through to a spam. OK, um, just a few more steps I'm going to do. I'm just going to go over to email. This is where you would put in your email address. So I'm going to put in info at web squadron.co.uk. Um, I'm also going to go down here and where and I'm going to get rid of the page URL, the user agent, the remote IP and the credit and the date. Yeah, the date and time is all I really need. When it comes to reply to a lot of people leave this blank. If you leave this blank, when you get an email, the email will be your email address. So when you hit reply, you're replying to yourself. Now, sometimes you do have to refresh the whole page. I don't just mean publish. I mean, literally refresh the whole page. And what you'll then find is at the bottom of the form here where it says reply to, you want it to now pick email field. I'm just going to very quickly style it. Um, I would say that, am I going to have any header text there? So I could have my header, name, email, message, or I could keep the form really, really simple and easy. So I could just literally um, go over to my contact. We're not going to have label. So we'll just make this the dark color like that. We are going to go down to actions after submit and it says collect submissions, email. We are going to go to a thank you redirect as well. The redirect will take them to a thank you page saying, thank you. We're going to get back in touch with you later on now. But thanks for joining in and all of that. But let's just get this form done and then we'll go back and do the redirect. When I put that there, by the way, the redirect did open up here. And this is where you would add in your thank you page that you're going to go to. Let's just leave this for now. Let's just go to advanced. I'm just going to add in some padding at the top and we'll go for about 40. And we'll go for about 40 from the bottom as well. Now, column two. At the moment, there is nothing in there. You know, what was the point of it? Let's just go back to this column here. And I'm going to move this away from the right by about 20, like so. And I'm going to go to this column over here. And I'm going to actually give this about a left of 20 as well. So there's a there's, there should be 40 pixels spacing between column one and column two. Now in column one, this is where we're going to drop in a little bit of text. We've got a bit of wording and we've then got an image there as well. Just because it's a little bit more kind of like exciting, I suppose, than just having a form. Now we're going to hit update before we continue and we stick this into our tab, we might as well just do our thank you page as well. So it saves us coming back into the template. And here's the thank you page. It just, it's got a section with thank you. We've got another section where we'll be in touch and don't forget to keep watching Imansity, the creative commander, that's me. And then I've just used a, another plugin, WP Social Ninja, which you can get for free just to add in like a YouTube channel feed that it automatically updates every so often. So if we go back to our template now, and we click onto it and we go down to actions after submit. We remember we picked redirect. We go to redirect and it's now going to say, well, where do you want it to go? So I'm just going to paste into here the link for the thank you page, right? Um, for some reason, it doesn't work like normal other links do like on Elementor where you just type a little bit of it and it kind of appears. You do have to make sure you've got the correct URL for your thank you page and stick that in. Even though we're going to have three components and you're probably thinking, come on, get on with it. By getting this all in here now, it means we're ready for later on. Now, you might want to just double check, though, how your thank you page does look on responsive mode and, you know, make sure it looks all right. And we need to do the same here as well. So we're going to go to uh, responsive mode and I'm just going to put this onto mobile for now. And you can now see that because we added in a bit of padding uh, to or uh, on the right side of the column one, the left side is right up against there now. So I'm just going to go over to the column. And I'm just going to reset this. And I think what I'll do is rather than touching that, and I'm going to reset it here as well. I'm actually going to do it on the section. So I'm just going to 0, 0, 0, all of that. Put that to 40, 15. I could have left it as 40, but I'm just putting it in. So everything isn't squashed up against the edge. You've got a little bit of breathing space. Column two is below column one, which isn't good. Remember, we're doing this on the section. You get a responsive and we're going to reverse it on the mobile. So you now get the text first, you get the image and then you get column one below column two. 
So I'm just going to give this a bit of breathing space. I would say 30. But there you go. So we have our form kind of done. That is form one. Now after this, everything is gravy because all we do now is copy that. Well, sorry, make sure you publish first and update. Make sure you do that. Okay. We're going to copy that. I'm going to create a new template. We're going to call it section. I'm going to call this uh, contact two, and I'm going to call this uh, collab or collaboration. Okay. Uh, we're not going to do anything there. Close, close, close. And we just hit paste. That now will have everything that we did for the first contact form. You know, you did your margins, you did your padding, you checked it on the mobile, obviously do your tablet as well. You're happy with the way it looks, the font, the sizing, everything was fine. You didn't have to adjust anything else. So we've changed the wording and we've changed the image. Now this form, we don't really need to do much more other than go down to email and change the subject to be a uh, collaboration. For instance, it's going to go to the same uh, we, um, thank you page. So we don't need to change that. You can double check that is still going there. That's all good. And I would say, again, just double check how does it look on the mobile mode and it's looking fine. Hey, let's get planning da, 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 da. and you've got the form there. So I'm pretty OK with that at the moment. Now we're going to add in the third section. OK, now this is going to be a little bit different because we're not going to use the same contact form. OK, so I'm going to call this one contact free and this will be subscribe like that to create template. Now, this has its own um, thank you page because this is part of a MailerLite uh, plugin, or not MailerLite. We use MailerLite to do our uh, list um, subscriptions and our newsletters. So this is going to be, if I just paste in the page, we're not actually using this form, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of that form. And I'm gonna go to one of our pages where I already have the code over here. I'm just gonna copy this shortcut. So this is one of, from one of our freebie pages. So if you use MailerLite, uh, when you do all of your campaigning, it gives you this, you know, chunk of HTML code. So we've got the MailerLite form and it's a bit of HTML you drop in and it kind of generates this form now. Um, this MailerLite form already goes to a particular thank you page. It's a separate page where you will then have like three or four freebies that you get as well. By the way, I'm not here advertising anything like that. I'm not saying come and subscribe. I'm just showing you a way of how I'm getting like three components into the form here. So again, this is all done. So there we go, we got three templates now and we have a short code for each one of them. So we're on our contact form as it was and we're just gonna drop in the short code for the first contact form, okay? And it will probably appear like this, but don't worry, it does appear once you've like hit style or if you've refreshed or published the page, it does appear. So there you can see we have got a bit of padding there. There's the page with the padding removed from the templates. Okay, I've just shrunk it away and I think that looks a little bit more cleaner. Let's just copy. Copy, copy. So can general queries, this one's going to be called a uh, collaboration. OK, and we're going to get the short code for that, which is 6024. I'm going to drop that in. OK, and then we're going to go to general queries. And this one is now going to be a uh, subscribe. And we're going to get the, uh, the form, the short code for that and drop that in to over here as well. So we've got all of our forms in. So if I preview this, we even just Come on, let's just do that. Okay, like so. We've got general queries, collaboration, and subscribe. We now have three different forms available. Now, this could be really useful if you have a different form for, um, um, I don't know, uh, students, parents, uh, professionals, companies, maybe. Maybe you've got a different form. Maybe you have different fields. Maybe for the student, you just want them to tell them a bit about themselves or contact. Maybe if you've your maybe for teachers, you want them to upload their CV or qualifications or something like that. Businesses, you might want a bit more, maybe um, your bank account details. I don't know. You know, you, you, you can you can then now have a different form to cater for different audiences. Now, at the moment here, this is on the uh, left alignment. Remember, you can do vertical as well. So if you want to go with something like that, but this now messes up the look of what I did. I was very um, clear about the fact it was going to be a horizontal layout. I could go for center, but I actually prefer the justified option like that because I just find that um, it just feels a lot more cleaner when you're looking at the wording like that. Um, the titles, though, um, it would be nice though if the titles were centralized. Uh, so what you could do is if you go over here to where it says the title tab, if I type a uh, center like this, 
and then just do a uh, center. In fact, let me just type the word center in properly. Then I can just copy paste it. If I do that, okay, and I go down to my tab now, collaboration, uh, just make sure you put the closing or the backslash so it stops it. So here's our home page. You go to contact. We now go over here, general queries, collaboration, and subscribe. Okay, look, it's, it's all here for you now to do what you want. We'll go to general queries, and what we'll do is we will put in Imran Sadiq, and we'll put in a, um, let's just put in our web address. It should still take you anyway. Hello. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna test that I got the email. I know I get emails from me. I get loads of emails every day coming from this form, and they're not spam. Now, when you hit send, you got a message to say form sent successfully, but then within like, I'd say a split second, it's now brought me to the thank you page, okay? This is not a demo, this is live, okay? And I've still got my menu options as well at the top. So this is a real life contact form. This is not just a video for the sake of it. This is our real life contact form. So we've split out different ways of people contacting us with different options. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. And I hope it's taught you to just do things a little differently with tabs, contact forms, and templates. Take care, I'll see you soon.